What's up, guys? We are Tottenham TV here, back episode three of the podcast. Back here, my brother Ben, as always, and an absolute pleasure to bring my grandpa Brian Churner onto the channel. Grandpa, how's it? Grandpa how's it? Brian, <laughs> well, I've been coming through this channel quite famous. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Absolute pleasure having you on. How's yeah, it feel? Eighty-two years, and I've never been so famous in my life. <laughs> You're get a rendition of your famous song. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not allowed to swear on this <laughs> on this channel. Uh, we can make exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, all right, we'll start obviously with Crystal Palace. We start. We played them on um, Saturday. We were all there. Yeah. If it was cold. It was uh, wet. Very wet. You kind of swam there. You said. Yeah. <laughs> how How was the journey on the way to the game? Oh, was... uh, the journey was uh, quite amazing. We had expressions with us in the car, <laughs> and that was quite exciting. Uh, I actually found out a lot about him. I didn't realise he had a first uh, in, in in the university. He was quite a bright guy. I mm. think. Uh, and he's very, very, very interesting guy. But he, uh, you say that he, like you're surprised. I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised. Um, but it was great. I, you know, it was great fun having him there, particularly when he needed to go for a piss. It was, that was quite <laughs> interesting. <laughs> and how is it being at Selhurst Park? You know, it's not all the. You know, you, you were sitting right at the back. I, I was feet, actually with you. My but... feet were squelching before I got into the stadium. I had my shoes were covered with rain. My pockets were covered with rain. <laughs> And we get into the stadium, we could hardly even see the game, you know, it was such a bad view, it was unbelievable. And how's it, how's it, you don't, yeah. you don't usually come with us for away no, games, it's hard for you to stand right. for 90 minutes. My plan minutes. was not to go, uh, <laughs> I should have kept to my plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it was fun, but yeah, the ground, the ground the, where we were, right at the back, because um, what I don't like is standing for an hour and a half, um, but... Uh, and normally you can sit down at the intervals. You couldn't even sit down for the interviews because intervals because you have to move your seat. You have to get out of your seat for anybody to get past you. Right. Um, and we're right at the back. Every time somebody put their hands up to cheer, you, I couldn't see what they were cheering. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a good day. I enjoyed at it. At least they were cheering. That's a good sign. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Well, let's talk about the game a bit. Uh, it was another scrappy win. We've said that many, many times this season. Um, obviously, we made it nine wins out of 12. Um, what were your impressions? Obviously, being there, you said you couldn't see much, but no, I couldn't. <laughs> only... It was, was, you know, first half we kind of struggled a bit. We kind of to, to create any real chances. Palace kind of put us under a, a bit of pressure, but we, I think, we grew, grew into the game a bit. And I thought it was a well-deserved three points. What, 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 how do you see the game? Yeah, I think we could have we could have got more than three. Mm. You know, more, we, uh, we could have got more than, more than one goal. <laughs> more than more one goal. goal. Yeah, my prediction was two one. Mm. Um, but um, no, we could have got more. Uh, but I mean, what was really interesting was, I think, how Sissoko is coming on. I think that is the, that's the best news we've got this year. Mm -hmm. That he's, you know, last year everybody would say, let's sell him, let's get rid of him, we pay too much for him. But, you know, he's coming through. He's, he, he's, he's uh, pushing forward. He, run, he, breaks, he breaks into the, uh, into, into the area. Mm -hmm. um, he does runs. Uh, my thinking also we, we we don't get goals from corners <laughs> that's and definitely reckon, a problem i kind of did though this week though well sort <laughs> kind of, of. <laughs> yeah in the it end, counted, in it the counted. End. i wouldn't call it from the corner but it was yeah, <laughs> indirectly but but sissoko i think should be up there up there when they uh when they when they do the crosses over mm. the, the thing is that's i think strength. why sissoko was back is because he's so fast and if palace come and catch us on the counter attack there's someone back that can actually keep up with them yeah yeah, that's true, but you need those. And he's strong we, as well. Yeah, but I mean, look, we get we we get loads of. I think if we were in the if there was a uh, a list of who who's got the most corners, I think we'd be close on getting it. And if they yeah. were goals, then we would be far better off. It's like that PSV game we, we had, had about like nearly twenty corners. That's or right. something. That's, that's crazy. Right. But how much of a confidence boost would you um, would it give to Soko, given how the fans re received him after, during the game and after the game? They yeah, were just singing his name throughout. Was great. And reportedly, apparently, in the dressing room after the game, the Spurs players were in the dressing room chanting the Sissoko oh, really? chant. <laughs> that's why. That's what I've read. Um, so, how much do you think it would? How much of a confidence boost do you reckon I'll give a player when when they've had all the criticism and to get all that praise they're having now after so long? It's got to make a difference. It's got to make a difference. Fun. He seems to be feeding off it at the moment. Yeah. The confidence. Yeah. And he got called up to the France squad as well, which yeah. is massive for him. Mm. Yeah. But I don't put him down as the man of the match. No? No. I put Loris down as the man of the match. He saved us I, at times. Yeah, I think he saved us at least four goals. Mm. You know, he, he played really, really well. And, you know, he, he gets criticised so much. And I, I think we, 
we lose out. He does do some stupid things, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, he saves so many goals. But the the stupid things he's been doing has mainly been in the Champions League this year, I think. In the Premier League, he's he has been pretty good for us and saved us on multiple yeah. occasions. Um, he just needs to carry on that form into the Champions League, and we've got a massive Champions League game next, do we? Completely yeah, must Inter Milan, win. absolutely massive. But talking about Lloris, I mean, he's come under a lot of criticism this season. We've criticised him a lot, and I think it's warranted most of the criticism um, for you know big mistakes in you know obviously against PSV and against Barcelona. Um, but uh, you know, a few stats have come out this week, um, namely from who scored and a few and a, and a few other places. That firstly, apparently, he has the best save percentage uh, mm -hmm. of any of the European keepers in um, in the top five leagues this season. I'm not surprised. And apparently he's, according to who scored anyway, their rating, I don't know how much you can trust it. Um, I'm not really, I'm not a big follower of theirs, but apparently he's been the best goalkeeper in the Premier League this season. And apparently he's been the ninth best player overall in the Premier League this season. So the question is, are we under, do we underrate him? Do we not appreciate his qualities enough? I, I, or do we focus too much on the no, negatives? No, I think, I think when he makes a mistake, it's multiplied 10 times over. Mm -hmm. That's the nature Because of, he's made yeah. the mistake. But, uh, but when he does really well, he doesn't often get the praise. And I think we do underestimate him. It's kind uh, of no, I don't think the manager does. No, definitely. I don't think the manager underrates him, but I think the fans underrate him sometimes. Well, we've said it before, the manager and Lloris's bond go beyond football. And they, it does, because as many times Lloris has stated his future lies where Pochettino... His, where his future lies right yeah. um, I think Pochettino absolutely loves Lloris as a man as a player and what he stands for apart from drink driving let's I'm going to say does he go out drinking <laughs> <laughs> let's leave that aside um, no nah, but I think the nature of football fans is is like the mistakes get maximised tenfold and when you have a good game it kind of gets forgotten about the next week if you've make a, made mm -hmm. a mistake so it's a difficult one but I think Lloris at the moment he does deserve to stay as number one. I know I've said before, maybe Gazaniga might be slipping in there. But he's saved us so many times now in the Premier League and he's just got to keep doing that yeah, and transfer that form into the Champions League. you got to think of the Wolves game. He made some crucial saves. West Ham game mm. against Crystal Palace now. Um, yeah, he's in... He's. It's weird to say in the Premier League he's actually been in very good form. We've we've not conceded that many goals in the Premier League. I think maybe 10, go 10 goals conceded in yeah. 12 games. Maybe it's not as good as the um, City... Chelsea and Liverpool, but it's still a fairly decent defensive record, and I think he's yeah. definitely been part of that. Yeah, I'm just not sure about him being captain. No, I I think it's very. I don't think it's such a good idea having the cap captain sitting at the back. Right? Who would you put as captain? Kane. Kane. I, yeah, because Kane, Kane Kane's not just sitting in front of the goal; he's actually moving all the time and moving people around. He gets around the pitch, uh, Harry, doesn't he? Yeah, he gets around the pitch and he's leading, but he's in the front, and I think that's where the captain should be. Um, it's very hard to captain him from, from behind, I think. It, you know, often they can't even hear him, I think, when he's shouting or, or trying they to get say they, in position. They say Loris is kind of a quiet leader. In terms of he leads by example, he shows he he shows people how to how to be on the pitch and how to conduct themselves in terms of in, in and not just shouting at them and kind of barking orders. He kinda of leads by showing them yeah. how to how to be. Yeah. That's that's the but argument. When he's not drink driving. Yeah. But, <laughs> go back yeah. to corners again, you know. You know, it's the captain's job to make sure everybody's in the right position and ready to get those corners. He can't do that from the back there. It's got to be done from the Well, front. they're attacking, but when they're defending, he can. Yeah, yeah. when they're defending, he can. But then I think we've got... We've got... Um, Odewald. Yeah, uh, and Vertonghen. Um, can, and Vertonghen. can he teach and Vertonghen. Ericsson how to beat a first man at a corner? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure that Ericsson should be the constant co uh, corner taker. For me, I yeah. think Lamella's the best corner taker. Yeah, he, he is. He and, 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 good and corners in. But Trip is also good. Mm. Trip is Trip is a good corner player. Corner he had a few. But, but talking about back to Lloris, he had a few flaps at the corner, didn't he? Against Crystal Palace, nearly cost us maybe a goal. So with all the with all the praise we were getting him, obviously that save right at the last minute where they saw off went through. Uh, right at the death and he used to, a big big chance for him and Laurie's kept us out but a couple of corners he flapped down Tompkins had a couple of good chances so is that something that maybe Foyf had a couple of chances as well yeah <laughs> in our goal yeah so I don't know <laughs> what do you he started off really shaky didn't he yeah, yeah 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 
and but he, he grew into the game and he was absolutely superb once yeah, he did you reckon he was man of match didn't you? well he reckons he was right. man of match yeah. for me I thought he was absolutely outstanding I yeah. thought I thought what a boost that performance will give him given the fact that he actually had a decent game last week at Wolves yeah. and unfortunately he you know he ended the game giving away two penalties and, uh, and then then when you look back at the game you think oh okay he's actually had a poor game because he gave away two penalties and passed under pressure yeah. by the end and so you you think maybe a lesser manager might have been hesitant to put him back in and put more pressure on him in a big game like Crystal Palace where we have to we we basically had to get three points and defense had to be on point and he did he put him back in straight away the next week in a big Premier League game and he showed that faith that he had in him to put him in the Wolves game and I thought he paid that faith tenfold not only did he score the win I thought defensively he was absolutely outstanding he was apart from those first 10 minutes because he looked like he carry he had those penalties in his mind when he started the game yeah. bad mistakes yeah, he, right. I think he made about three ma- bad mistakes in those first 10 yeah. minutes to yeah. be fair listen okay he, he had a shaky first 10 minutes but how many times have Spurs had a sloppy start and I don't think you can put that maybe just down to fourth yeah I agree with you I think he was part of that I wouldn't put that as a marker down against him that he had a shaky start I think he, the fact that he came back off that shaky start anyway and had the game that he did shows Definitely. the character show, yeah, shows the character he has 100% yeah, but still they were getting through weren't they to Loris I mean they, they were getting shots on the goal they weren't, yeah. weren't defending that, that well really if, if Zaha was playing it would have been a lot more dangerous you know they yeah. didn't have their best Could player be. playing Palace yeah. and uh, Could be. if he was playing I reckon they would have got in much yeah. more than they did so, you know, and they got in a fair amount of times so I don't I couldn't wouldn't give him none of the match um, I'll give Sissoko a man the match just because he was yeah. just sensational throughout the whole game. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was. He, the fans, he held it the whole the whole game through. It was good. The fans singing his name. He just looks like he's breeding off this confidence, and we're really starting to see this player that yeah. we actually bought. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, I agree. I agree. He had a fantastic game. I know he's probably up there with Foy for probably man of the match from that game. I agree with you there, um, but. I don't know. I think Foyth Foyth, actually did get it though, didn't he? I think Foyth did yeah. get it, and he scored he? the winner. Yeah, yeah he, he did. Got he got man of the match, and he scored. How, but the, and also, I think the the celebrations for the winner for when Foyth scored shows the team bonding we have at that, and how much they recognise each other's talents and they respect each other. And you know, they all know that Foyth's been trying for how long of year to break into the team and even get minutes on the pitch. It's very rare for him, and they they see him every day in training. They appreciate how good he is, and you saw it when he scored. How much they all love him. I think. Yeah. And I think even last season when we saw him play, maybe maybe the latter parts of the season, um, he played once or twice. He would put in some great performances and the only thing we said was the guy needs to bulk up a bit. Mm. Doesn't seem like he's bulked up, but it seems like he's 10 times the player that we saw from last season. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think he's absolutely sensational. He's going to be a rock of our defence for a long time to come. <laughs> I'd hope so, yeah. It's a big yep. prediction. Yep, yep. I think that's quite, that's good. And it's, it's also, isn't it? It's also very interesting because, you know, Pochettino must have actually knew that because there's so many players now that are coming into form, which is probably why he didn't buy anybody. Or well, part of the reason. Because it's, <laughs> it's, well, we don't know. We don't know if it's the money reason because, uh, or, or, or the, the ground. But nevertheless, we've got a good team. If all our, if we're fit, we've got two teams there. And that's what you that's what you've got to have. Yeah, because because if you look at the game, the, especially this season, but especially when I say in the last five games, who's really been stepping up? You've got Juan Foyf, Eric Lamella, Musa Soko, uh, to an extent Paolo Gazzaniga, but even though I wouldn't say Lucas, first choice, you got Lucas Moura this season. These are players who weren't involved at all really last season, that's or right. barely, barely got minutes on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, and now they're becoming. It's almost like by, the, buying them in. You know? Yeah, they're they're new. They're new, almost like new people, and even Gazinga really because he didn't play much last year yeah and he, he's played one game yeah and he's played and now he's coming in and I think he's probably better than uh, uh, Lloris, he's number yeah. two no, oh, Vorm, better, yeah, Vorm, Vorm. better than Vorm yeah. oh much better than Vorm yeah he's, he's, I think he's taken that number two spot the defence looks so shaky when Vorm's in goal but well, I think when Gazaniga was in goal it just they could see put their yeah. hair down a bit yeah. and relax you know yeah. what I mean yeah I think that's right mm. I think that's right he hasn't really been tested yet though. Mm. who Paolo no, no. He's, he's he's made, he, yeah. has, really he had made tested. some really important saves. Oh, he has, but the, the, you know, they wasn't really tested. Mm, I know what you're with, saying. You know, like Loris was. You know, what was it? Five goals he saved. Yeah, he's never been in that position. He mm. saved a couple of good saves. I know. But Gazaniga, yeah, we've got a hundred percent record with him in goal. Yeah, 
That's true. And we never lost or drawn. Yeah. So I think that's mainly that the hype well. around well, him. What, in the two matches he's played? Well, I think he's played <laughs> more than that. Yeah, because Loris was out for a bit for the Dream Drive. I think he was out for, a, for about a month, wasn't he? Um, and then he also was injured, I remember, um, after that. So he's actually, and also got, obviously had the red card against PSV. So Gazzini has played a good five games maybe this season. Five games, yeah. But it's mad when you think about it. Nine, I think nine out of the 12, is it, that have that we've um, went to the World Cup have been injured for the season. Ten out of the twelve. I Ten believe. out of the twelve. Just Toby and um, Harry Kane. And left Harry standing. Kane looks like there's an injury waiting to happen there, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, after well, Trippier got injured tar- in Dembele. He gets targeted every time, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard for him, isn't it? When he, which is so important, right, that our players like Lamella and Lucas are stepping up because Kane is just being tri- double, triple. He's always. I mean, for the past three years, he's been like that. But at the moment, I think he's just not playing. I think he's actually. I think Kane's role has just been slightly adjusted this season. I think he's playing a bit deeper. He's making space for other players, and I think we're exploiting it, which is a good thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, th- I think what is what is he's doing it is because they follow him, because yeah. they target him. He pulls players he away, up space. which gives them the, the the space to come in mm-hmm. uh, and and open it up. But when you actually look at it, and the actual players that have been injured, you're looking at Hugo Lloris, our number one keeper, Jan Vertonghen, um, now Trippier. Aurier, Danny Rose, Dembele, um, yeah, Dembele. Dembele, Dyer now. Son was on military service. Son, <laughs> avoiding military service. Um, yeah. Who else? Deli Ali. Yeah. Um, Lamello missed a good part of the first, for, like first five games. Yeah. Winks missed the, like the first few games. You know what I mean, this is Wanyama, basically our whole squad. Wanyama's been missing for God knows how long. Dai is now injured. Or was he back? Did he come back against Palace? No, he's injured, but he's in the England squad. Yeah, I think he was on the bench against Palace, yeah. wasn't he? Um, so that's a big, and we're still winning games. Yeah. How much if we... these players got injured last season, we wouldn't have a team because yeah. you know because Lamella was out the whole season, mm-hmm. Wanyama was out the whole season. Sissoko was nowhere. <laughs> Sissoko was nowhere. Foyth was pretty much nowhere. But when you look at those players that have been injured, it is amazing to see where we actually are, and it's very impressive. I know people are saying we haven't played well, blah blah blah, but <laughs> that is the reason for yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. That is the reason, and it's so impressive to be where we are at this stage of the season with the amount of injuries we've had. Do you, yeah. How much of a testament is it to you know Pochettino's managerial ability that he's been able to deal with all these injuries and he's been able to get the best out of the fringe players who have come in and you know even making them starring giving them making them star like yeah. they're, they're now playing extremely well they're even pushing the door to become star players and how so how how impressive do you think his it's leadership is? There? It's interesting watching him because I'm in the leadership business and yeah. work with the leaders of charities and just watching him as a leader. I, it's very. I, I'm in, very impressed with him. I think he's a thinker. He 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 he's very careful in terms of how he trains them. I mean, I don't. I think it was the year before last when we hardly missed a header. Mm-hmm. He, clearly, he worked on them heading it. And, mm-hmm. and I've been watching, and it's, it seems to be coming back. But mm-hmm. somehow we've lost that because other know. people know. So they're actually matching it. And so he's constantly working on, on the players. And I think the reason that um, Sissoko mm-hmm. is now coming through is down to Pochettino's, A, confidence in him, but B, the way he's trained him to bring him back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he really does work work hard on it. You know, I'm not sure about his views on Brexit, though, <laughs> <laughs> which I think he's just come out saying that, um, you know, we... Sh- we should uh, we shouldn't have another <laughs> vote, and we just should have stayed where we were because nobody knows. I agree with some of the things he says, but he's got strong views about it. Which yeah, is, he does. Which is really he's interesting. Really, what was the weird. metaphor he came out with? Oh, what the metaphor that? was um, if if I have to take responsibility for the for my starting eleven, I don't ask the fans who I should yeah. play. Yeah. And that was a metaphor for the referendum, no, no. Bre- the Brexit referendum. Yeah, but the fans tell him. I <laughs> <laughs> definitely do tell him. Well, the fans told to him to sell Sissoko, and look where Sissoko is now. That's yeah, true. That's true. Sometimes that's be true. able to take tough decisions for the best of the team. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a but he's a real leader, isn't he, Pochettino? We're so lucky to have him. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I hope uh, we can keep him for. A he few just needs years. to win something now. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a good chance this year we win something. I think win? I think obviously given that we're in the position we are now in the league, we know nine wins out of twelve. We've won. We've we still got a, like a run of home games to play because we've played eight games away from home, or some would argue twelve. But we've won seven of eight away games. How excited are you going into the rest of the season, knowing that arguably with Ali, Ericsson and Son yet to hit top form still, 
that we that we have a good chance of achieving to get of getting a trophy of coming into form at the right time. I don't, I'm, I'm I don't think we'll have. I don't think we'll have any home games <laughs> this season. We'll be playing even if even when even if the ground starts in January, they won't be home because it's got to take some play in. Mm. Then it'll be new, like Wembley was for a long time. Wembley wasn't. Yeah, it was about three, four home. games till we uh, yeah. actually so start winning games there. So don't, I wouldn't get too excited that you actually think that all those games are going to be at home. The They're going is, to be in, in the lane. Maybe, but they 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 they've got to get used to a completely new ground. Yeah, maybe again, for, maybe for the players, but for the fans, it will be like a bit of a homecoming. You know, it'll be taking the same routes, going to the same shops, you know, doing the same things as going to White Hart Lane. So for the fans, it'll be a it'll be like going home. But for the players, I don't know what it'll be like. Yeah, because they'll need time to bed into the stadium. Well, uh, I suppose you're right because I think the fans make the players feel at home mm -hmm. because Wembley hasn't. Hasn't felt that, has it? When you haven't felt it, and I, it was interesting going to Crystal Palace, not having been to an away game for a long time. The difference between the uh, connection between the fans and the players was totally different to the way it is in Wembley. You can hardly hear, yeah, mm. anything. And, uh, Atmosphere was brilliant, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was just incredible. How much of an effect do you feel that ha has on the team and the players when it's a bit disconnected, like it's at Wembley? Oh, I think it's huge. I think uh, I think it's it, it has a huge effect. The interesting thing is the effect it has on the referees. Yeah, you know when they're when they're constantly being booed mm -hmm. and and Put pressure on bad, them, yeah. bad language on them. You know what what does that do to their self esteem? How does that actually help them make good decisions? And I, I think it's a hard job. Maybe it doesn't make them make good decisions, but maybe it'll help them sway a few decisions our way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's I think that's what the point Grandpa's making. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was a football referee when I was when I was younger. In the RAF. Uh, when I was in the RAF, yeah. Did and you get yeah. a lot of bad language against you? I went to court once. <laughs> went to court. <laughs> so I, I gave an off I gave an offside position uh, offside call which was questionable, and one of the other team was which was a police team came over and thumped was me. It the <laughs> well, it was the in coppers. Gibraltar. It was a um. it was a local police in Gibraltar, and they thumped me. <laughs> and the the referees association took it to court. Really? And who, yeah. who won the case? They thumped me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> you ever given off like call again? <laughs> yeah, but I, I feel, the I feel for the referee. What was the liner? The linesman. Uh, I was the liner. Oh, you were the liner. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was the liner. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was quite an interesting time. So I learned a little bit about football. Mm. <laughs> and how and you learn, and how did it affect you when you if you, you were getting more abuse from players? Oh, it was terrible. You, you really you felt awful. Do you reckon they could? Do, do you know, you as, you, as you go off the pitch, everybody's booing you and shouting at you and blaming you. Uh, I didn't. I didn't do it for very long because I I hated it. How many would you say that when uh, when people were being more abusive towards you, it, it, would, it would affect your decision making? Um. I think it does. You don't want to make a yeah, decision. You, yeah, <laughs> you don't you want do. to make a decision. That's that's yeah. more the question. Not making the wrong decision. Happens. Not making a decision. Yeah, but so you often see that they don't make a decision when they should make a decision. These referees, you know, they're at a professional, proper professional level. They should be. They shouldn't really get affected by what's around them, just like players shouldn't either. Oh, that that would be lovely, wouldn't it? So, you, so everybody shouldn't be affected by. Uh, I know they by, do. By, 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 by being bad, bad mouth. So I think it's human nature, and when it's a whole sixty thousand people shouting at you uh, that you're a, uh, no, I mustn't use the word on it. <laughs> um, but the, you know, calling you every name under the sun, and they do it. It's almost natural for them. They they they, they might not have done anything wrong, and they're still shouted at, and still shouted at, and still shouted at. It does affect you. Um, but well, on to on this topic though, it was announced today that VAR is going to be brought into the Premier League next season. And you think that's a positive step? Hundred percent, definitely a positive step. I think if VAR was be in implemented this season, I think Arsenal would be a lot further down the table. So I wish it was implemented this season. <laughs> but um, I was strongly against VAR when it came in last season in the cups because I thought it just wasn't handled correctly. Mm -hmm. I think in the World Cup it was very good. I think it was a really good step in the World Cup. And if they can implement it in the, like they did in the World Cup in the Premier League, I think it will be a very, very good thing. Really good thing. You found a VAR, Grandpa? Yeah, 
Yeah, I just, I mean, the, the, the great thing about football, or as my, my colleague always says, you must call it soccer. <laughs> really? Who's rugby your colleague? is football. And, uh, but it's because he drinks too much champagne, that's probably, why. <laughs> probably, but the whole thing about um, VAR is, is it breaking up the smoothness. I mean, football is very fast. You know, and those decisions, if they're not made quickly, it'll break down the, fl the flow. And I think that's the issue. But I think they're working on it so that it does. But you're talking about every every top league in Europe now has VAR. England yeah. are the only only country that don't. Yeah. How do you feel it was um, used in the World Cup? Were you happy? Were you, were you think it was used well? Well, it wasn't used very well. And it, uh, really? I, mean, oh, some I thought was, it was brilliant in the World well, Cup. Sometimes they took ages to make the decision. They did. They had to play it and play it and play it. The play was stopped. I actually think at the beginning of the World Cup, it was absolutely brilliant. And then they hit a few hurdles kind of midway through where yeah. they were kind of taking too long. But I think all in all, it was very good the way they used it. Yeah, I think we see so many bad decisions made that in the end, VAR will... will I'm, I'm for it in the end. Mm. Um, so when it first came out, you were strongly for it, but then you, yeah, you were at that I've game. Seen it we yeah, we were together at that game, at the Rochdale yeah, game. Yes, right. And that was that was a, that it was, was a fast. That was a complete fast. 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 It's interesting. I wish also they, the referees would uh, like. In I'm, I'm a I'm a big rugby fan as well. Football first, soccer first. But, <laughs> uh, rugby, but but in rugby, the referee you can hear the referee. Yeah, well, he says. Yeah, yeah, and I think that would be useful to to understand why they've made that decision. And they just do it as part of the, the you know, there's not no hold up. They just say it. it's like almost like a commentary from the referee. Yeah, I and think I that think would that's help. Quite good. They apparently they trialed it. To be fair, apparently they trialed. They did trial it. Yeah. Um, for, uh, for uh, mics on referees. Apparently the the language from the players was so bad oh, they just right. couldn't <laughs> they just couldn't carry it on. So apparently that's what I've read. Yeah. But that could have been a while ago. So. Yeah, I wish. I wish. That, I mean, they don't. They're not strong enough. The referees are they when they do get harassed when they've made a decision that that's not liked, and they it's almost natural now. Whatever decision they make, they're going to get harassed. Yeah, that's and I true. Think, and I think they should be. They should be much stronger and give a yellow card out against players. Quicker. Yeah, that's for sure. I agree, I agree with that. But they didn't. They try stop that surrounding the referee. That only the captain can speak to the referee. They now. did do that. Yeah, but I've... that doesn't happen, does it? Mm. They all, you know, the, the person that's been accused of fouling is the one that goes up to the referee and. I think letter of the law at the moment is only the captain is allowed to That's speak to the referee. That's what they're supposed to do, but, but the referees aren't, caught, does, they, yeah. they aren't strong enough. Um, all right, let's move on to the topic. Obviously, we talk, we did talk about Wembley actually briefly before, but it was announced three days ago that Spurs have implemented a, quote, contingency plan um, going, surprise, for, the surprise, <laughs> going surprise. for the end of the season that uh, we will be playing every game from now up until... They said uh, now up until um, Burnley... At Wembley, that's confirmed. So they've announced that they've agreed a deal with the FA to play at Wembley up, up till the end of the season, but only as a contingency plan. Now, do you believe it? This is at the end of the season. Yeah, they've they've announced they've agreed a deal to play at Wembley f until the end of the season, but they they say that it's not actually confirmed that we're going to be there. It's just a contingency plan in case the stadium isn't ready. We have the deal in place to be playing at Wembley. Do you believe that's we a club? Get that another means. PR. Um, it's more PR from the club just to soften the blow of being at Wembley for the whole season? Or do you believe it still is, is a genuine, just a contingency plan? I, I, I mean, I just don't see... It. I mean, it's not just the just the ground itself. It's all the surrounding areas which that, which they've been working on, I understand. We must go and have a look yeah. and give a report on the next one. But I think it's... A re I, think it's I think in some ways I'd prefer them to stay at Wembley the to season. the end of the season, not, not break it up. Uh, because at least we we're doing well at Wembley these days. We understand the ground better than most. And I would I would I would go with it staying, and then we start the new season in the new ground. I've been saying it for a while now. It's got to be a fresh start, new season, new stadium. I don't understand why we would have moved in there halfway through the season. The only thing I can understand is that we're paying Wembley every game to play there, and the money's just sinking and sinking. I think it's like two to three million each game. Um, I don't know what deal they've been they've made until the end of the season, if it's a lump sum or if it's still game by game. But we all knew this was going to happen. I've said it for a while now that we're going to be at Wembley for the rest of the season. I don't think it's any sort of contingency plan. I, they know exactly what they're doing and we're going to be there for the rest of the season. It's obvious. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I, agree with I you. mean... I don't think it'd be a bad thing. Financially, it might be. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I was <laughs> reading a report that... Apparently there was a whole report about Spurs finances on television. I, did, did, I, I don't know see if that. you guys seen it, but I was told that uh, 
um, you know, they're, they're actually in a very financially sound position. Um, Even after the stadium and everything. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, and they could have afforded to buy players, but uh, they decided they couldn't find the right person to, to, to buy at the right price. <laughs> yeah. The thing is with Wembley, it's crazy because you've got a game now, we've got coming up at Wembley Chelsea, which is usually sold out in either hours or day, in at least a day or two. There are so many tickets left. It's really? gone. It's gone to general sale. Nobody wants to go to Wembley anymore. It's really? absolutely madness. Well, you can nice. anyone now can go buy a ticket to Chelsea at home. Well, that's unheard of usually. Yeah, mm. and I've never heard of that before. I remember. Okay, it was the first game at Wembley, but that game got sold out in seconds mm -hmm. last year. Ninety thousand mm -hmm. people. Is that yeah. our next? Is that our next match? That's our next match. Yeah. Well, Chris Cowlin's still certainly <laughs> going to be there in, uh, in uh, this season. No, he said two thousand nineteen. Oh, that's true. He did say 2000. Very, very clever, Chris. Very clever. Very cle careful with his well, words. Yeah, Chris gets a mention every single podcast. Well, this Mr. Stadium. He has yeah, to, I guess. Yeah, because he, he gets in there. Yeah. He yeah. gets in there. We all every try and get in there. <laughs> we should. Yeah, any anyway, you, you uh, Spurs people listening to this, you know, uh, you, you should let these, these guys that are running this podcast, really let them get in there because they're doing a good job for you. They're doing <laughs> you heard a good that, job Tottenham? For you you heard that, should... Tottenham? Let us in. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Especially you, Grandpa, little Mr. Bloke. Levy. <laughs> Mr. Levy should really let you in and because you're doing a good job for them. They, they should, you know, you're not outcasts. You're actually supporting what's being done and, and people listening to you. So, uh, you know, yeah, they should listen. So if you I'll tell you what, Daniel, listening. if you let us in, we'll buy a platter of cheese off you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy a of cheese at the cheese factory. <laughs> um, all right. Well, there's, that's Wembley sword again. I hate talking about Wembley, the new stadium. But that is what it is. No one likes Wembley, but it's just something we're going to have to deal with for the rest of the season. Um, there was more news coming out, um, I think it was yesterday, uh, about Christian Eriksen, who had an interview um, with, uh, with one of the papers. He said... It was about his contract. He was asked about his contract. He was asked whether he's been on the bench recently because he's yet to agree a contract. And he said, "I, I, um, I cannot say just just yet." He said, "You're going to have to ask the management team," um, which is a bit weird thing to say. I think he also said um, he lets his agent take care of it, so he can look, um, he can concentrate on the football side of things. He said there have been many many talks with Tottenham. But obviously, nothing's been agreed yet. Is it a worrying situation, do you think, with Christian Eriksen at the moment? Definitely. Definitely a worrying sign. I think Christian Eriksen, you know, we've said it many times, he holds that attack together. He's that complete glue in there. Uh, the worrying sign is that they've been through talks many times and nothing's been agreed. That's the worrying thing. I think something good out of that interview was that he hasn't felt himself since the World Cup, but he's had a few weeks rest now and he seems fit and firing, that's ready what he to said go. Himself, yeah. He said that. So that's that's a good sign leading for the rest of the season. But these contract signs are really worrying me. I said at the end of last season, I wouldn't be surprised to see Christian Eriksen leave at the end of the season just because he's that good and he could play at any team in the world, in my opinion. How vital was Christian Eriksen, do you think, to us? I'm not, I'm not so positive about him. I really? Mean, I, I, you know, these, he's, he, he was brilliant on his, on his place kicks, mm -hmm. on his corners, in you know, years to a couple of years ago. But we haven't seen a, a, a decent shot from a place kick from him in a while. Yeah, in a while. And I think since that, Juventus, yeah. And I think the centre, the, the, where he, he he's good, but I, I don't reckon him now as our, one of our best players. I mean, he hasn't showed he has been this season, but I think last season he was absolutely brilliant. Parts, of, parts of last season. I even thought the whole of last yeah. season. He was he was so vital to the way we attacked. He was central to everything. I think everything that we did good going forward kind of came through him. That's well, what I think. I think if we if, if uh, we lost Dembele, I think, him, I think that would be bad. Dembele is pretty much gone, in my opinion. Yeah, we mm -hmm. might have seen the last two. We might go then in January. Be, then it will be bad. <laughs> Yeah, we got, we then we'll have to, to sign Undombele from Leon. But if the reports are true that Ericsson is demanding pay parity of Harry Kane, uh, a report to the 200 grand a week, which is what Kane is on, um, are Spurs right to say we're not going to offer you that amount and we're going to you know, put you maybe on 120, 130 if he's demanding 200? Or do you <coughs> think Spurs should pay, pay up? I think they should pay up. He's that good. And he's, he's not even... like He's at a right age, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to be getting that sort of money. Um, I think he's so vital to us. I think he should be one of the top earners in the club, if not on pay parity with Harry Kane. Mm -hmm. I I rate him that highly. Yeah, 
I'm, uh, I'm just not so sure. I'm not so sure that he's worth the. You'd give Dembele two hundred grand a week, or Danny Rose. <laughs> well, I certainly, <laughs> certainly give. Uh, I think Dembele is important to us in the centre there. I've not seen it. Any player that holds the ball, that gets the ball, and keeps it there in the centre, he just absolutely controls it. The way he glides with that ball, yeah, and, and but strides past players. But I agree with you in that he doesn't then go forward mm. while Ericsson does. Um, so that they missed that, but then then we've got Lucas now that who does go through the Lucas and Son to some extent, and Sissoko. <laughs> and we've got three people that are breaking through. In rugby, even, you call it so say going through the game well. line. <laughs> even so, though, those three players, even Lamella, they're not as clever as how Ericsson plays. Like mm. the the way he he moves the ball, the way he assists a man, the way he does the assist of the assist. He's just mm. he's a mega think, player, mega I, mega player. I think we'll be mad to. Not to not pay him. Yeah, not pay him. I think he's that. I thought I think he would be near impossible to replace if we were ever to sell him. I think he's by far our most creative player. I um for, out of anyone we have, I think he's so vital to how we play. We we I think we're a different team when he's on the pitch, and I think he's he's now proven himself over the last four years how how good he is, how vital he is on a consistent basis. I think he gets rate. I think he can get even more goals than he does get, but. He gets regular goals and regular assists. I think he's now, what, 26? He could easily, I think, get a big move if he wanted one. The fact that he's saying that he'll sign a new contract if he's paid pay, pay parity to someone like Harry Kane, I think, in my opinion, is more than fair. I think he could easily be demanding more than Kane. He has the right to, I think, in my opinion. More than Kane? No, in terms of... In terms of he has the right to demand a wage where he, which he would be getting out of any other club easily, two hundred fifty grand a week. That easily, he'd easily get that any other cl- uh, club he would move to. So, if he's willing to take two hundred grand a week, and we and, and we end up losing him because of that, I think that'd be a massive, massive mistake. Well, it's the same. Going to be the same story with Toby Alderweireld. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way the club are looking at it, which is not the way I'm looking at it, is my in my opinion is that. You've got a player who has come on so well this season, Eric Lamella. Eric Lamella can play that role that Ericsson's playing. Center, yeah. And the way that Daniel Levy probably looks at it is the way he looked at it with Carl Walker and Trippier. You know, Carl Walker he was like, "All right, we can get fifty million. We've got a ready-made replacement in Kieran Trippier. Kieran Trippier is nowhere near as good as Carl Walker. Mm-hmm. Eric Lamella, when Ericsson leaves, will slot into that role. He's nowhere near as good as Ericsson, and mm-hmm. we're just going to keep going like that. And that's that's the issue with Spurs at the moment. When was the last time Ericsson was the man of the match? Oh, he was man of the match plenty of times last this season. Year. This, oh, season. this season, this yeah. season, he hasn't played to his uh, maximum ability because of the World Cup, and he said it himself. He hasn't felt himself this season, but now he's had a bit of a rest and he's feeling firing and ready to go. Well, let's see it. Yeah, we'll see it. Let's we'll see it. it. Trust let's me, we'll see it. it. He'll score against Chelsea. I want to see him be the man of the match. I want to see him being the man of the match. Yeah. I, th- I think he's just absolutely superb footballer. We're luck. I think we're lucky to have him at the moment. We, yeah. I think he's. You don't good. think he's gone off? I think this season, yeah, he hasn't been great. I agree. I'll take your point on that one. Well, that's many players. Look at Harry yeah. Kane. Yeah, but he's still got six goals and twelve. You know, he's still got ten. Ericsson goals this hasn't even played nearly as much as Harry Kane. No, you know? he hasn't. I mean, he's he hasn't hardly played, played this much. season, Ericsson. Mm-hmm. I think you just got always with Ericsson he's, he's had periods in each, each of his seasons where he hasn't been at his best but he always comes, comes he up he always with starts good. slow and then grows into the season he always comes mm-hmm. up with the good usually last season actually had a fast start last actually. season what I'm saying he was good throughout the whole season mm. I think you can't compare him with Harry Kane in a way because Harry Kane why, why he's so brilliant is off the ball you know, when, you know when he's on the ball he's great but he's all the time he's fighting he's pulling people away Opening in the spaces is is it's not just his goal scoring ability that makes him so good. I agree yeah. with you. I think what Ericsson is also a quite hard worker off the ball. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe Ericsson, not as as Harry Kane. Yeah, you know, but... last season I think Ericsson ran the most out of anyone in our team. Really? Yeah. He's a he's all he's a and that goes unnoticed because you don't actually think about that when you think of Ericsson you don't mm-hmm. think that he's a guy who runs so much mm-hmm. but he is he's ran but the most out of anyone on our we, team we reportedly offered him less than Deli Ali well Deli Ali's on what's Deli on 150 apparently reportedly which is interesting why what is this Levy just trying to save money again do you think it's got to be <laughs> there's no other way around it Ericsson is so vital to the way we play. He's got to be on more than Deli Ali. He's worth much more than Deli Ali, in my opinion. Much better player. Mm-hmm. He's, he's signed, so... isn't he? Deli Ali. Yeah, he signed. He signed mm. a few weeks ago. 
But uh, they're more they're more than happy to give a quarter of a million to Richard Scudamore. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? We paid Richard Scudamore more than we paid in transfer fees. Oh, does my head in. Did yeah. you see did you see Daniel Levy's uh, interview today about I it? S- I mean, what did he actually say? It was just a very awkward interview. He was saying everything that he thinks the Premier League want to hear like, oh, Richard Scudamore deserves it, blah, blah, blah. But you could see like he didn't want to pay that money. You could see it in his face. <laughs> he just he was very upset about spending that money. Well, probably you paying that money in 10 year installments. I would yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> 250 grand over, over 10 years. It's a very surprising decision because I mean, he, he's he been paid OK, isn't he? Yeah. For his, his job. So why suddenly should he get five extra million? And he'd be getting a pension and, you know, and all these other five million things, from each it? club. That's tiny club. Paying no, 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 no. 250. No. 250,000. Oh, 5 club. million in total. Five, five million oh, total. that's all right then. I thought it was 5 million. No, no, we'll give him 5 million. No, you <laughs> Bloody guys. hell. No, 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 no. That'll be disgraceful. It's a strange decision to make. And, we, you know, mm-hmm. people argue that money could go back into the, you know, the fat ticketing of the fans, you know, how much. Even you, grassroots football. Anything. And they've, it's going to the pocket of Richard Scudamore. And, you know, m- listen, maybe he has, maybe you could argue he's done a lot for the Premier League. And he's done a lot for the brand and, you know, he's built up to where it is today. So maybe he does deserve the credit of that kind of gift. But I think it doesn't sit right with a lot of fans. And it gives yeah. you a few... If Ericsson is only 250,000... <laughs> exactly. Sure, it gives you, it gives you uh, well, Eric, a whole year of Ericsson. Probably a one-weekly <laughs> wage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's one-weekly wage of Ericsson, isn't it? <laughs> 250 grand. A um, couple of weeks, anyway. But... Well, there, there's that. No, it's five. Point. It's five, five weeks, isn't it? Well, the his current wage is yeah, yeah. <laughs> fifty grand a week. He's not actually not on that much. That is mad when you think about it. A player of Christian Eriksen's caliber on fifty grand a week. You think about any player who's as good as him in the Premier League, David, like or, or you know just a bit better than him. No, he's on one hundred and fifty. Is he? No, Deli Ali no. is. No, right now. What's what's he on? I think Eriksen right now is on about on about seventy. Right, seventy. Yeah. That's thousand all. a week, yeah. <laughs> That's all. Oh, that is ridiculous. I didn't realise that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not surprised that he's uh, yeah kicking up about it. Mm-hmm. But you've got players that are nowhere near even half as good. I as I think Sissoko's on more than him. Yeah, you got players that are nowhere near half as good as him getting more money. Why is he? You're not? talking about someone like Samir Nazri, who's a, who was in talks to join West Ham. He wanted ninety grand a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Ericsson's on seventy. Just doesn't Jay, make sense. Jay and Lovren's on like hundred and twenty grand a week. You know what you I mean? Know? It's just. Ericsson should be one of the top earners in the Premier League. Is that good? Mm-hmm. No, I, when I when I criticised, I didn't realise it was on that level. So that Salary, yeah. Well, there, there you go for that point. Um, and let's go to a couple of questions. We'll go to first um, from Jenk at Forza Yids. He asks, go on, Jenk. Forza. Yeah, he's, no, uh, he's a, re- he's a Regular. consistent com- commenter. Uh, <laughs> consistent what commenter? Uh, how optimistic on how how optimistic <laughs> on you on the future of Danny Rose at Tottenham Granddad? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, he's, I, I just think he's fantastic, and I think last, when he started to come back last year, he was overweight. He was obviously fat, I thought, mm-hmm. and slow. But this year, I think uh, Pochi has worked on him. He's made him get fitter. And I think in the games he's been playing, he's, he's getting back to his best. But it's and worrying. I think it's just sad now that he's off injured again. It's so. worrying, though, because every time he comes back, he seems to get injured. That's yeah. the worrying signs. He did look very good just before this injury. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It remains to be seen because if he comes back again and gets injured straight away, it could be yeah. curtains for him. Yeah. He, you, sure is right. he is he the long term answer for Spurs at left back at the moment? Well, like I said, it depends on his injuries because it's just been non-stop with him for like two years now. Mm. Um, before that, one of the best left backs in the league. Yeah, uh, he's come back this season. I think his performance has really improved, uh, but it just remains to be seen to see if he can come back and sustain a long run in the side. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, Davis is interesting because Davis has got better. You think mm-hmm. so? Yeah, he's definitely got better. His, his crosses now are better. His throw-ins are better. He's not as fast as Rose. <laughs> Apart <though>. from that. <laughs> he's, not, he's, not, he's not as fast as Rose. I that's mean, definitely that's true. That's the other thing. So. Um, but he's, he, Poch has been giving him a lot of, uh, a lot of games. Yeah, well, he he's has got to. no choice. He he's got to. no other left-back. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Even Vertonghen, who could have filled in at left-back, is injured. So he, Rose, I 
I really will miss him if he's uh, if he does leave. But mm. let's hope it doesn't happen. Um, all right. Uh, from ATL Spurs at ATL Spurs. What go on Aviva? <laughs> go on Aviva. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I guess it's directed to the grandpa again. What does being a Spurs fan mean to you? What does a bit member of Spurs fan to me? What does a big oh, Spurs dear. fan? <laughs> You're asking me that, are you? All <laughs> oh, so. right. Well, I think it's um, one of the most special things in my life, but it's got nothing to do with Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to do with the family. You know, having two grandsons, it's very special to be able to go out with them to matches, and it really is, really is fantastic. You don't usually get quality time with your with your grandchildren um and uh, you know i haven't got any sons <laughs> i've only got sons-in-law <laughs> i've only got None daughters so, my gra- so <laughs> yeah so so being a spurs fan is very special for me because of that also i must say it's you know it's always a pleasure going to football with your grandpa and it's uh well i love every week i look forward to picking you up you know having our chats <laughs> going 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 to the local cafe or used to be the cafe getting the munch having a debrief on the game it's yeah. just it's, it's it's time which I really appreciate. Yeah, it's 100%. interesting because I didn't know anything about football at all. I know I was a referee, but uh, I think I'm beginning to learn now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. What is great is 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 how the the other fans like you, what's his name? It's just you know are asking about me. It's it's oh, ATL, it's ATL, ATL spell, yeah, yeah, they're, they're asking about me and. Uh, you know, it feels good. I've never felt famous in my life. <laughs> well, there was one passion. guy. There was one guy who was a Spurs fan from uh, Ireland, and he he uh, he answered <laughs> one of these live things and said, "Look, uh, my 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 son wants to come over. We want to come over to watch a match. We've loved Spurs all our life, but we won't come unless Grandpa Brian is there to shake my hand." <laughs> and and you know, and he and he he came. They both came. And we were supposed to meet them at a certain time, but we missed them. And they waited till after the match to have the picture taken and shaken hands with me. And I just thought, that's incredible. You know? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I wish I got paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back in the day when we used to go to football early, to like maybe like back in the early 2000s, I remember you used to come with us and... Um, Used to hold the program and used to check the numbers to see <laughs> yeah. who's on the ball. Yeah, <laughs> and right. now, now you know everyone who <laughs> numbers there are. Yeah, amazing. I know it's being changed. It's coming on as soon as they take their top off. I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And now you're Revolution. officially the Tottenham granddad. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> From because your new sport is number your number one sport is cricket. Yeah, not it's massive. It's, it's, it's number two now. Number two. Yeah. Oh wow. That's a, that's a that's a, that's an exclusive right there. I think yeah. that's breaking news. Yeah, breaking, <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> like Grandpa's number one sport is now football. Unbelievable. Because he's soccer. Just, mm, soccer. Football. For <laughs> football. We call, we call it football in this country. We call it football in this country. Who calls rugby football? Is there Mike, a country? M- Mike, Mike Burnage. <laughs> oh, <no>, Mike Burnage. <laughs> we have a comment from. Um, we have a comment saying you might not have any sons, but you have fantastic daughters, though, from Jason Friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason. <laughs> why, why are you reading out West Ham fans' comments? Uh, that was Uncle Jason, if any of you know him. Uh, you all recognise his name from the channel. Um, all right, well, let's go for... Just one thing to Jace. Spurs have won more in the London Stadium than West Ham has in the last year. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I actually, it, actually, it's interesting you should say that because I think that we've learnt a lot from them going to the London Stadium, and I think that the way they've they're building our stadium, they've learnt the mistakes that they made with the London Stadium. Uh, I think it's two, think we're two very different different cases, though. Yeah, I know, but never, nevertheless, they designed. You know, uh, the Spurs was the ground was designed after uh, the uh, West Ham. And from what I heard, Daniel Levy paid a visit. All the stadiums, he's like the best stadiums in the world. Yeah. And he took little pieces from each of those stadiums yeah. and made it into one mega stadium. Yeah. Well, that's what they say. It's yeah. going to be the best stadium in the world. That's what they're saying. Uh, more comments coming in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> your favourite queen says, I love grandpa. He's the best. And Dan Smith says, such a cool grandpa you have. Bless him. <laughs> <laughs> was it cool from who? Um, that was, it was your favourite queen. 
My favourite queen. <laughs> Who's my favourite queen? <laughs> Your wife. <laughs> my Maybe. wife. Because I'm, well, he... I'm a real royalist. I'm very, yeah. I'm very, uh, Here's a very question. Intimate. It's not expressions, Grandma, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, no. Here's a question. When are we going to get Bobby to, the fo- to a football game? Is that a real question? No, that's a question for me. <laughs> <laughs> um... Probably not in your lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to get her once. That will be fantastic. No, she's, Maybe we'll get all the tournament women in match. one go. She's been to a cricket game. How long did she last? She, that's <laughs> it was a very, very, very good match. Oh, brilliant. Did she enjoy it? Yes, yeah, she did. Didn't want to go again, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, Didn't like me eating bacon sandwiches. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll, we'll keep our little secret. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, hopefully Bobby's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, she's not watching. No, um, she understands. <laughs> she understands how much you like spending time with your grandkids. Absolutely. <laughs> What's um, that got to do with bacon? <laughs> <laughs> Part and parcel. I, I think I stop you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, You're going to get in trouble with my mum after this yes. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're in big trouble now. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, here's another Can question. Can we edit that out? <laughs> <laughs> We're live, unfortunately. Um, from Suraj. Suraj's opinion doesn't matter. That's the name, actually. <laughs> Suraj's opinion doesn't matter says, question to Grandad, what's your sp- favourite Spurs game you've been to? And he says, love the pod, guys. Keep it up. Oh, oh. It was Manchester when we went to Manchester City, beat Manchester City last year. What at the right at the beginning of the season? Yeah, a couple of years ago, uh, White Hart, uh, Pep's first defeat in the Premier League was it? That was yeah. first, Pep's first it defeat, two 0 Yeah, that was a that was a great match. Was that when Eric Dyer scored that goal? No, it was one after when um, it was Deli Ali scored. It was two 0 mm. But really, it's very hard for me to say which is the best because there's so many good matches mm. that I enjoy. Um, if I didn't, I wouldn't be going. <laughs> what was your favourite match, Tim? Favourite match I've ever been to. I've always said that that uh, 4-3 at Upton Park when Stalteri scored the winner, that's probably probably up there. Um, I've always said, because that was just um, scenes when Stalteri scored. We all three of us were there that game. Yeah, we were all there. Mm. Do you remember we had our our hairs painted? Yeah, our hairs painted. Because I I remember we were quite, obviously I was quite young. And we had a we had our hair. Did I have my hair painted. And I don't know. You, you were clever. <laughs> you painted it white. <laughs> I haven't washed it. Yet. <laughs> you washed it. Um, I remember we and we were we were with Uncle Jace on the way to the game. He's like, you probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you probably should put your hood up or something because you don't want any West Ham fans seeing you with your uh, hair uh, spray painted on. But I remember when De- when Defoe had that penalty and we rushed to the front to see the penalty and. When so I mean that game two and throw two nil down, got it back to two two, going three two down with five minutes to go. Berbatov scoring a free kick and you thought we snatch a draw and then Stolteri scoring the winner. I think that has to be my favourite away game you anyway. Know what, um, What's I've, yours? I've got I'll tell you in a sec, but I've got a video on my phone. And oh, back yeah. back then it was, you know, when you take a video on your phone, it was very, very pixelated. You can't really see much. Mm. So you see a green pitch and you hear Spurs fans. And then you just hear some random guy in the background going, how the hell did we win that game? <laughs> <laughs> and that just, that just captured the whole thing, you know what I mean? But in terms of my best games, like, I've been to so many like epic moments with Spurs. Like I was there when we beat Arsenal 3-2. Mm. Um, I was there when we drew with Arsenal 4-4. I was there in the San Siro when we won uh, Crouch. But I think my favourite was probably... Um, Man City away in that Champions League playoff when Crouch scored with like 10 minutes to go. The scenes when he scored that goal, I don't think will ever be replicated. You know, I probably, I fell down about 10 rows, <laughs> literally 10 <laughs> rows, had bruises all over my body. Oh my God, it was mental. They kept us, they let us leave the stadium, but outside the stadium, they kept us for a while. And the Man City fans were chucking bottles and sticks <laughs> and everything over at us, but nobody cared. Everyone was just. Oh, it was epic moment that. And the Carling Cup final was up there, I think. That was, Carling, a, great, yeah. that was a fantastic. And I remember you gave up your ticket to give to me because I didn't have a ticket. And I think a few days before, I thought I wasn't going to go. And if, I remember a few days before we were at your house and you put you just you called me over and you said, uh, "I'm going to give you my ticket." 
just like that. And I was like, no, you can't. He's like, you just adamant. You've just left the ticket. He's like, I'm not taking, I'm not using these tickets. You're going to take the ticket. I did that. Yeah, I you did that. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always, I'm very thankful for that always. So giving me that ticket for yeah. the cup and, final. And you haven't had a chance to repay the favour yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, it's the opposite because we were a match uh, not so long ago when he virtually murdered me. That was me. That was Ben. <laughs> no, it was him. That, that was, was Ben. Me. Was it you? Was yeah, it was he wrestled you to the ground. When yeah, you, he grabbed my neck. <laughs> you know, would have been a, in rugby, it would have been a foul. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, to be fair, that was the first time we went at Stanford Bridge for what, 20, 22 years or something? <laughs> it's a good excuse. <laughs> it's a good excuse. Um, right, any more questions? Um, uh, Callum underscore Hammett asks uh, what's your worst moment at a game he says his was um, being there when Fabrice Mwamba had a heart attack on the pitch I think you had that game weren't you mm. when uh, Mwamba had a heart the game had to yeah, be called the game off got called off was that do you remember yeah. yeah you were there yeah. and um, do you have, have do you have any bad experiences that Spurs stick to mind yeah that was the worst one when <laughs> when when, uh, when we we just we scored our first goal at Chelsea was it when we, when you your worst mad. moment is us winning uh, at Stamford Bridge for the first time in 25 years. Yeah, because years. you nearly murdered me. <laughs> <laughs> in, fact, in fact, I get scared now every time we, we score a goal. <laughs> you, you know, know what? You know, everybody gets so angry and you know, this poor, frown old man, you know. Gets... <laughs> you know, I was, I'm, I'm so conscious of it now. Like, and maybe it doesn't look like I am, but at that palace Doesn't game feel I, like it. at that palace game I was trying to act as like a barrier between you and everyone else yeah. <laughs> but that was also you, you got you got yes it wasn't you because you got taken out because you uh, had a camera or something that you got uh, taken no, out of the No, that was an incident that happened at half time. Yeah, they, they said that I, I shouldn't have the tripod, so they made me go out of the ground and give them the tripod and come back in. Some people thought I got ejected. I didn't get ejected. I was fine. I was there for the second half. I just had to temporarily leave the so ground. So when was it we had that mad guy that came up and tried to have a go at you guys? That was that game. That was that yeah. game, yeah. <laughs> With my grandpa there. there. Bad Disgraces. That was, that, that was great, but... Um, we don't, when was it that I got, had a bottle thrown and hit my head? Oh, that was that. That was Millwall. Yeah, Millwall at home. Know. That was we we parked in the place we always parked in in the school by the park. We turned the corner at White Hart Lane. At White Hart yeah. Lane, and suddenly, I think it was just me and you. Was it? Yeah. Were I you was there? there? I was there. I was there. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Us three. We just turned the corner, and suddenly we're in the middle, bang in the middle of the Millwall fans in their fan police escort. Yeah, and we're being like, escorted into the ground. And we're like oh being escorted God. into the away end, oh and we're like, God. what the hell are we doing here? And a bottle comes lobbed over from the Spurs fans, and it hits Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, but they were all, but all the Spurs fans were shouting at us. Yeah, you know, <laughs> as if we were as, weren't Spurs. Yeah, yeah we're Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> we would have got beaten up by the Millwall <laughs> fans. I, I, I went over to the policeman and I was like, "We're Spurs. We shouldn't be here." And he was like, "Oh, you better keep that down." <laughs> <laughs> Can't save you now. Yeah. I remember yeah. once we were. We travelled up to Portsmouth um, by car, I think it was oh, yeah. a, in 2008, and we were there very early. I don't know if you remember this. Um, in we your were, convertible Saab. In your convertible, convertible Saab, remember the Saab? <laughs> um, we were travelling up to Portsmouth, and um, it was the days when Sol Campbell used to play for Portsmouth. And no, we, were, we called him Judas on this channel, yeah. please. <laughs> but <laughs> it was when Judas was, used to play for Portsmouth. And we were about, I think, three hours early for the game up there, and there was a lot of traffic um, going towards the ground. And I remember we were, it was a very sunny day, so we had the roof down. And all of a sudden, we're stuck in traffic. And we, we it's like a standstill. And we looked to the side of us, and there's Sol Campbell in his, in his Range Rover, just right next to us. So I remember, obviously, because we were in the convertible, we just started standing up and, like, putting our shirt towards his car and, like, you know, giving him all the abuse. And he was just, he couldn't wait to get away from us, I think, that time, putting up a little alongside Sol Campbell. Do you think he remembered you? I don't think he remembered. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he remembered me from that long. I think it was like 2008 or something. I'd be very surprised, but you never know. So we're coming for you. You know. <laughs> I remember last, uh, when we were at Wembley. I think it was last year, but I can't remember who we were playing. And we we shuffled down, and we were right in front of where the, the players were. And the players, yeah. were be the players were behind us. That's right. That was in the Carling Cup game, and Lamella yeah. was behind Lamella us. Lamella was behind us, but I didn't. And Sanchez. Yeah, but but I thought somebody else was Lamella. Yeah. <laughs> I started talking to him and said, you know, how are you getting on? Are you getting better? Are you, how are you feeling? And it wasn't Lamella. It was, Lamella was too low. <laughs> ben, have you got a picture of it? You've got a picture of it, Ben. <laughs> I think 
think there's a video of that somewhere. We yeah, have there to is, there is. Yeah. Of Grandpa I think we put it in the, in the vlog. I think we put it in there. I, I can't we... remember which game it was. Who did I we have before Barn... West Ham? I think it was Barnsley at home or something. Uh, Barnsley? Yeah. I think something like that. 1 0. But you live near Lamella, don't you? We live very near Lamella. You're yeah, the you corner bought a dog us. just so you could go walking. <laughs> 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 Don't, don't give all our secrets away. <laughs> don't give all our secrets away. Unfortunately, uh, Melon's dog has passed away, so uh, that plan failed. But um, right. we still have a dog. Give him a, <laughs> you give him a present. Yeah, oh, we should. Go for him. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying give him to Dylan. Has he got? Has Lamella got piercing eyes though? Yeah, he does. Piercing he's eyes. Really he does. Piercing. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're they're cold. They're yeah. really cold and piercing. Um, it's, it's amazing. I, I was frightened of if him he, when if I If he wasn't him. a footballer, I wouldn't. I yeah. don't know what he would have been. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> All right, that was a good reminisce. I enjoyed. Yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> any any more memories? I don't know. Any of us together. Our fans are enjoying it. That's they've uh, they, our views have gone up a bit since we started reminiscing. So I'd say any any comments bit. about the reminisce? Well, we've got one quite another question from Dan who's asking, um, what game? Um, De- um, what game has he lost it the most and went crazy after a Spurs goal? Who, Grandpa? Well, any of us, I guess, but I think it was directly to Grandpa, yeah. <laughs> Everyone the, wants to know you. Probably the Chelsea right. goal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would go, go crazy. I, don't, I just have to live with two grandsons that go crazy. <laughs> <For you. laughs> I, 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 couldn't, I don't dare go crazy. <laughs> I think when we scored that f- that goal in the Bernabeu, yeah, shit so, popped off. Like, that, was, that was pretty but crazy. But I think... Like again, it goes back to that Man City goal when Crouch scored because the celebrations after that goal was absolutely mental. It was like we'd finally reached the promised land. Yeah. And it was like, you know, because up to that stage, Spurs had never performed well in a big game. And that was probably the first time, apart from that Chelsea game, where we actually showed up in a big game and actually won it and took home the points. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wouldn't really mattered. Yeah. That's yeah, what that I'm crunch saying. Crunch time. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I think I think the other reminisce for me is that, particularly with Ben, because I started going with Ben because he was older, uh, and you know I had to teach him all the swear words. What all the swear words? <laughs> <laughs> I won't repeat them now. But Ben said, "What does what does that mean? What do you they say? You can say it. You can say it. You can say it. You can say it." Why are you calling the referee a wanker? <laughs> uh, what's a wanker? What's a wanker, what's a wanker <laughs> Grandpa? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> oh, I think you told me to ask my dad when I got yeah, home. Probably. probably. <laughs> well, that was, that was if you'd asked my dad, he wouldn't. Uh, he didn't. I don't think he knew. <laughs> I remember once um, sneaking out of my house to meet you at the football on a Saturday because obviously we're. I don't know if you've noticed, we're two Jewish boys. And, um, three Jewish boys. Oh, three Jewish boys, yeah, three Jewish boys. And we used to not go on football on a Saturday because it was the Sabbath, because our parents... Don't bring me into this. <laughs> well, I used to not go on football on a Saturday because it was the Sabbath, uh, or Shabbat, as we usually call it. And um, I remember... Ben used to go by himself all the time. Well, you, Grandpa, my grandpa used to take him, which my mum wasn't very happy about, but my mum still had me kind of not going on a Shabbat. And yeah, I, my, I, my I, mum had him on lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember one day, I think my parents um, uh, went out for lunch or something on a, on a Saturday and I wasn't invited or I just didn't go. And I ended up sneaking out of the house and going going to the football. And I remember meeting um, Ben and my grandpa at the game. My grand grandpa's like, "What are you doing here?" And he and he and I was like, "Oh, I'm just you know, don't tell my mum." He's like, "We'll keep it between us, don't worry." <laughs> and but, to this day, my mum, my grandpa never told my mum went to that game. Uh, uh, we we had a joke knows. about it the other week. I think we had a joke about well, it. With yeah. her, yeah. <laughs> uh, but actually, a few times after that. What happened was is that we used to drive a bit down the road and meet yeah, you yeah, at the bottom <laughs> of the road. And, you used to, and then we used to drop you at the same spot and then meet you back at home like, oh, nice <laughs> to see you. I haven't seen you in ages. <laughs> we used to go, uh, conv- suspiciously convenient time. <laughs> so have any of you fans got any uh, stories like this that you yeah, can, you can us let, give us some, uh, some meat that we can chew on? <laughs> <laughs> or we got another comment. Um... Stay away from my grandpa. Just know, Gramps. Just know. There's got to be only one <laughs> <From> person. Expressions, <laughs> <using>. <laughs> expressions. expressions, Grandma. Grandpa's coming for you. Actually, I, I prefer to be called Gramps than Grandpa. Yeah, you you enjoy yeah. that more. Why? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Grandpa sounds old. It's like people's calling their dad Daddy. 
<laughs> or mummy. Mm. I don't, you know, somehow it's not, doesn't go, doesn't go well with me. I mean, nobody calls me daddy or daddy. <laughs> what about <laughs> fucking love grandpa? <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's got, it's got that adjective in front of it. Yeah, well, it's granddad. What do you find, granddad or grandpa? Because the, the song is granddad. Gramps. You like gramps? Gramps. <laughs> All right. I don't think I've ever called oh, you Gramps. Brian. Brian. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> your name's Brian. <laughs> I thought your name was just Grandpa. On the yeah, well. Yeah, well. <laughs> expressions. What is he saying yeah, now? His, his expressions he said, Bundem like man. <laughs> he said, my G. He expressions listening. He's, li- he's watching. He's well, watching. Well, listen. You know, I'm still waiting to meet your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you keep promising me that you're going to meet her. So are you bringing her to the next match? <laughs> She'll be there. Chelsea at home. <laughs> oh, yeah, and stay with us. Don't go for a piss while she's there. <laughs> You've got to look after her because you don't know what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope Bobby's not watching. I really hope Bobby's not watching. <laughs> Solomon Sh- Shaheen says get Gramps on Tinder <laughs> Grandpa doesn't need Tinder he would slay <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. Grandpa be the slaying beast of Tinder slaying beast <laughs> would you ever consider going on um, I'm a celebrity get me out of here <laughs> like Harry Redknapp not while I'm married no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right I think we've gone a bit over time. So right. I think that's probably time to wrap up. All right. Okay. Grandpa, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the right. podcast. You want to plug your... Right. Obviously, my grandpa, he's the chairman of a of a charity called the Ella Foundation. Do you want to tell us a bit about that quickly? Yeah, well, Ella, Ella is um, it stands for Experiential Leadership Learning Academy and their sister. <laughs> and he's also my sister's <laughs> name. Yeah. their sister. Um, and what we do is we train the chief executives of charities to be better chief executives. So it's very important work. It's a very important charity. And what is a real, real gift to me is that 82, I can still deliver value to people. And, that, and I, I like that as an example for everybody because it's a, it's a mind game. Retiring at 65 and not doing anything is really, really the first step into the grave. So my advice to everybody is do something. Do something different, probably, than what you've been doing, but do something, whether it's charity work or whatever it is, you'll live longer and you'll be happier. Start a YouTube channel? <laughs> YouTube channel, perfectly, yeah. I'll start, I'm going to start a new YouTube channel. I'm rivalizing. It's bigger than us, I think. You know, I have to go back to the team I used to support. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Zim- you know what it was? No. I think I do. Yeah. Chelsea? Yeah, because oh. I used to work in Chelsea, so... It was, oh, just, it was just down the road. <laughs> let's cut, let's cut, <laughs> let's cut. <laughs> but it changed when my uh, eldest grandson said, uh, You're Spurs let's now. Let's go to Spurs, <laughs> yeah, that's it. And then, uh, and then the rest, as they say, is history. It's history. So you, All right. So you can blame me for uh, Grandpa Brian being the Tottenham grandpa. <laughs> so my, my plan is to stay working until I'm 123. Do you wow. think by then Spurs will have won something? <laughs> 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 oh bloody hopes <laughs> you hear that guys you've got another 30 years alright <laughs> to win a try I think it's like 30 years yeah 123 yeah, yeah. All right, well, if you're interested in checking out the Ella Foundation, we'll put the links in the description so you can take a look if you're interested in Ella joining. Forums. Ella Forums. Ella, Ella Forums. So the link will be in the description below. Um, again, thank you guys for all your questions. And I heard and... they got a great social media guy on Ella Forums. <laughs> <laughs> it's rumour. It's rumour has it. I'm not quite sure. But uh, <laughs> thank you all guys for your views, your questions, your likes. Thank you all for watching. As always, if you like our content, give us a like. Catch us. Um, the next game will be um, no, Chelsea ne- at home. Yeah, the next podcast next week we're shooting Know Your Spurs. Yeah, the so be, there won't that. be a podcast next week. We'll be international break, so there won't be a podcast. We'll be a Know Your Spurs. The week after, we've got a very special guest. It'll be very exciting. <sighs> I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously we're going to be at Chelsea. Are you going to be at Chelsea with us at home at Wembley? I think yeah, you yeah. of us, yeah. And yeah. then we're, when we obviously then we've got um, Inter Milan at home, I don't and know what then Arsenal. What's the match on the fifth of fifth of December? November. November. Yeah. No, we've been the fifth of November. Fifth of December. I'm not. I think it might be Arsenal. Is it Arsenal? I don't. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. Fifth of December, Southampton, isn't it? 
Yeah, I think it's you're ruining our ending, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Southampton. 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 Anyway, we'll be at the game, so check us out for that. Check out if you want to see more Grandpa on the next vlog. We'll be there. Uh, but thank you for joining us, and as always, come Cut on, you Spurs. Spurs! And keep dancing! <laughs> <laughs> My other fans, Strictly Come Dancing. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a wrap. That's a wrap.